Hey, what is going on guys? Ben here, and this is going to be my review of the brand new Apple TV. So let's get started. So jumping right on into the design, you can see not much has changed between the new Apple TV and its predecessor. It's still a small black box that blends in with an entertainment center. And that's great because you don't want this Apple TV being seen. It's supposed to be subtle, unseen, and work well. And that's exactly what it does. With a more powerful A8 processor packed inside a slightly thicker body, we get better performance overall throughout the entire Apple TV. I.O. on the back is very similar to the old model with an HDMI port that does not support 4K video, a power port, an Ethernet port if you don't have Wi-Fi in your home, and surprisingly no optical audio from the old Apple TV. There's also a USB-C port, however that will be for in-store service only. While its design isn't flashy, it does serve the purpose of what this set-top box is aimed to be. That is, a subtle box that brings major enhancements to your existing television. So let's jump right into the features to see what this Apple TV brings and why I would recommend picking one up. So first up, the operating system. As you can see, it is much more colorful from Apple's old bland design with the previous generation Apple TV. So you can see the operating system is much more lively than the old one. As you swipe around, icons come to life and you can even wiggle the trackpad on the remote over an icon and it will kind of move with reflection. Apple's tvOS builds off of iOS, meaning you get all the familiar functions like double click the home button to multitask, the home menu, app store, all of these features are brought over to your massive TV with the Apple TV. Now the new Apple TV is interfaced with a brand new Apple TV remote. This remote features a glass design with a new button layout, which includes a volume button and a Siri button, which we'll get into in a minute. Now at the top of the remote is a trackpad for interacting with the Apple TV as opposed to the previous click wheel design. The remote is also rechargeable via lightning cable which means you no longer have to change button cell batteries and it features an accelerometer inside so you can play games on this Apple TV. Now we'll get into some of those other features later but first I want to talk about Siri. So with this new Apple TV you can simply press and hold the little Siri button on the remote and it will activate the full fledged Siri that you get on the iPhone and iPad. Now this allows you to search for movies, search for applications, and basically allows you to get everywhere that you would on the Apple TV normally, but with the power of your voice. For example, if I wanted to look up a TV series, I can press and hold the Siri button and say, Modern Family, and it would look that up. And then you get all sorts of options as to where you can watch that specific movie or TV series or whatever you're looking for. You can also use this for applications or sports scores or weather. It works in many different ways, and you can even ask Siri what did that person just say, and it will rewind your video about 15 seconds and turn on captions so that you can catch that line that you missed. Now the real benefit of being able to use your TV with your voice is practicality. It's much more intuitive and simple to just search for something with your voice rather than trying to use the trackpad to swipe around and click letters on a long bar on the screen. It makes it much more easier to just sit back, relax on your couch, say a movie name, and then watch it. Now this Siri isn't the full Siri that you get on the iPhone. For example, when you say a lot of things to Siri, like to do Google search or something like that, you can't actually get results, it'll just say I can't get this result. And that's where the Apple TV falls short compared to let's say the Nvidia Shield, which is running full Android TV and you can do Google searches with that TV. Despite that, the Apple TV's Siri functionality is still a major step up from the old Apple's TV interaction with just clicking and swiping. Now I feel that this quick search functionality to get you to what you want to watch much faster is the real benefit of this Apple TV over the previous one. But that's not the only benefit, there's also the introduction of the App Store for your TV. Now this brings many more options compared to what the old TV could offer. Now developers can make apps specifically tailored to you sitting on the couch and watching your TV. One app for example is QVC. They brought the live video of QVC and the products that they show on the regular TV and added the functionality to purchase those products right then and there from your TV. So now you can see a product and if you want to buy it, a few button clicks later you can actually have that product. There are also games for your TV. Now these aren't full-fledged games like what you get with the Xbox One or PS4, but a lot of people don't want those long games that you're spending months trying to beat. 
a lot of people want short, quick games that you can pick up and play for a few minutes and then put back down. And that's what you get with the iPhone, and Apple's trying to bring that to the TV. For example, Crossy Roads is a short, fun game that you can play for literally five minutes and then be done. There's no levels, there's nothing you have to beat, and it's a short, fun game, and it looks great on a TV brought from the iPhone. Now, if you want to have more console-quality games on this Apple TV, they do sell third-party controllers that work with it, that are of the more traditional shape. However, the Apple TV isn't really powerful enough to be running these full-fledged games, and for that reason, I would just recommend sticking with what Apple does with the built-in remote. Now, while this is a huge feature with the TV, it's not really fleshed out yet. There's still a lot of things Apple has to work on. First of all, there's not a ton of apps available, so more developers need to get on board with creating for the Apple TV. And two, the apps that are available don't just seem ready yet. There are still a bunch of features that I think they should add that would add to the experience and they just haven't done it yet. Now, regarding whether you should pick one up, I actually do recommend it. With the holidays coming up, it makes a great gift. And for only $150, you get a brand new design, you get a introduction of Siri into the TV, which makes use a whole lot easier. And you get the App Store, which brings a whole bunch of new features and content to the Apple TV that you couldn't get before. Now, the competitors such as the Nvidia Shield or the Roku TV, they have App Stores and most of them have search functionality with the remote. So regarding whether you should pick up the Apple TV or the competitors, it really depends on where your content is stored. If you have a ton of Apple movies and Apple apps, then it makes sense to get the Apple TV. But if you're a big Android person, the Nvidia Shield is better to pick up. So thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button and also comment down below on what you thought of this video. Anyway, thanks, subscribe, and peace out. Are you editing my video for me? Are you doing a good job?